So we're going to talk about the leading tone seventh chord, but this time in a minor key. So it has many of the same rules and, and function that it does in major, but there's a few things that are going to be different, and that's what we're going to talk about. Number one is the sonority. In a minor key, the sonority is a diminished, diminished seven. So that means a diminished triad with a diminished seven. As an example, we're saying, let's say our base, our, the root is a C, a diminished triad would be C, E flat, G flat, and a diminished seven would be a B double flat. So that is our sonority. Different than in major, which is a diminished with a minor seven. This is how you would write the seven diminished seven. It resolves typically to the one chord in root position or moves to a five, six, five. If we were to say, okay, and this would be um, an example in the key of D flat minor, so D flat minor, this would be our seven diminished seven. Our five, six, five would be C in the base, E flat, G flat, and A flat. So you'll see that the only note that would be different is that this B double flat becomes our A flat. And that's all you need to do to change when you're moving from a 7 diminished 7 to a 5 6 5 is have that B double flat, which is enharmonically an A, move down a half step to an A flat. Let's hear what that sounds like. Be your resolution to one. So you can hear how that sounds really good. So common, common resolution. Resolution of the tritone. So in this case, in a diminished, diminished seven, we have two tritones. In the key of E minor, the root would be a D sharp. Then we would spell F sharp, which is in our key signature, but I'll rewrite it A C. D sharp to A is a tritone. So between the root and the fifth, you have a tritone. F sharp to C is a tritone between the third and the seventh of the chord. Tritones are dissonant intervals that normally resolve in a very specific way. When it is a diminished fifth, right, so the tritone, is both the diminished fifth and the augmented fourth. Just inversion of the same two notes. When we're talking D sharp to A, that is a diminished fifth, diminished fifths resolve in. So you would expect the A to go down to a G, the D sharp to go up to an E. And I'll show you if we invert it, A, D sharp, that is also a tritone. It is now an augmented fourth because A, B, C, D. We're always figuring out intervals from the bottom up. It resolves out. D sharp goes up to E, A goes down to G. So they go to the same notes, but they're inverted. They're upside down. So diminished fifth resolves in, augmented fourth resolves out. That's your general rule that you want to remember. Okay, so right here, diminished fifth, out, augmented fourth, in for the resolution. So if we look at the F sharp and the C, our second tritone, it's a diminished fifth, it wants to resolve in. The F sharp wants to resolve up to a G, the C wants to resolve down to a B. That's the natural resolution tendencies for these tritones. So if we look at options here, double the third of the one chord, you can see why that would be a really good option. Because it allows the natural tendencies of the tritone to resolve as expected.
That said, it's not the only option. Sometimes the tritone between the third and the seventh of the chord, here, here, does not resolve as expected. Instead of resolving the way I just illustrated, and yeah, let me find that. Instead of that, this F sharp and C, the C does resolve down as expected, but the F sharp also resolves down unexpectedly. And you might say, Dr. B, those are parallel fifths. And I'd say, you are mistaken. They are unequal fifths. Because this interval is a diminished fifth, and this interval is a perfect fifth. And although unequal fifths aren't necessarily your first choice in terms of what the human ear expects, chords and intervals to resolve, it is acceptable to the human ear, unlike perfect fifths. Unequal fifths are acceptable. So, the tritone between the third and seventh doesn't resolve normally, which means at some, at some level you're going to have some unequal fifths. And that's okay. So just know that that, that that situation is an option. Let's, let's boil that down and, and take a look at how it would work. Here we are now in the key of B minor. Our seven diminished seven chord would be spelled A sharp as the root, C sharp the third, E is the fifth, and G is the seventh. It's a diminished triad with a diminished seventh. If we were to use option one on how to resolve this to a one chord, we would take the seventh of the chord and resolve down as we always do. We would resolve the E and the C sharp. Let me, let me do it a little slower. So A sharp to E, that is a diminished fifth. We expect that to resolve in. So the E would go down to the D, the A sharp up to the B. G, C sharp, this is an augmented fourth. We expect that. Did I do it? I did it. I did it the opposite way, didn't I? Alright, so diminished fifth resolves in, augmented fourth resolves out. So going to a larger interval. So smaller in. So A sharp to E, they go into a smaller interval. G to C sharp is your augmented fourth, it resolves out. So that would go down, the C sharp would go up to the D. Okay? So that would be where we allow the, the, uh, the, the tritones to resolve as expected. What we have is a slightly unusual doubling in our one chord. We're doubling the third instead of the root. So very often with voice leading, you have these two ideals, and sometimes you can't have both. The ideal for doubling of a root position triad is to double the root. It reinforces the, 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 the tonal center of that harmony. On the other hand, you want the tritones to resolve the way they are expected to resolve. You can't have both, so it's a trade-off. Which one is more important? And the answer to that question is going to depend on the phrase and how it fits into the music as a whole. So what we're trying to do in a music theory class is give you all the options that make sense to the ear so that when you are writing, analyzing a piece of music, you are aware of those options. We'll take the exact same vo voicing, but let's use another one of our options. What is not an option is the A sharp must go to the B, because that's the name of the chord. The seventh of the chord must resolve down. No options. In this case, this is your diminished fifth. That is going to resolve as expected. It's this C sharp right here that's going to do something a little different. It's going to step down to the B, therefore allowing you to have the more common doubling in a root position triad of doubling the root. And then lastly, 
Let's take our same seven diminished seven chord, but use a different voicing. So now we have a diminished fifth here and a diminished fifth here. The A sharp must go up to the B. This diminished fifth is gonna is going to uh, resolve as expected. This is the seventh of the chord. It has to go down. This C sharp can step right down to there. Just like we kind of had this C sharp stepping down to B, we have that same thing, but it's really obvious that we have the unequal fifths in this example. But that's okay. It's, a, it's totally a viable option. Let's listen to all three of those. Uh, in the end, your ear is what determines whether it works or not. And back in the Baroque era, there would be entire treatises written on how to develop a good sense of style, to have taste. This talked about developing taste. They did not assume that everyone was born with good taste. It was something that had to be cultivated and developed. And so you did that by listening to good music that was established by these masters using your ear and saying, does it work? And you then could kind of tell the difference between something that kind of works, doesn't work, and really works well. So let's use our ears right now and hear these examples. We're in the key of B minor, so I'll play a B minor triad. Our first voicing. That sounds perfectly acceptable. That's with the double third. That's with the double root. When we talk about cultivating good taste and a good ear, you have to be able to hear the difference between this and this. That is a very subtle difference. The first one with the doubled third. The second with the doubled root. Now let's go on to our third example. This one sounds like this. change that one and double the third instead. It's still an option. So what I'm providing for you here is not exhaustive, but examples. The principles are here. How the tritone resolves, knowing that sometimes you're going to resolve both of those tritones as expected and sometimes you won't. The one, the, what you do have to do is always resolve the seventh down. That is not an option. Let's take a look and see what happens when we take the 7 diminished 7 chord and put it in inversions. So a 7 diminished 6, 5. We are now in the key of D minor. Therefore, our chord would be, our root would be C sharp. E is the third. Then G is the fifth. And then B flat. We're going to go to a 1, 6 chord. What has to happen? Well, C sharp is the leading tone in the key. It must resolve up. If we think about what we're going to, the notes we would be looking for are D, F, A. There's no way the C sharp is going to jump down to an A. That would not be smooth voice leading. It's going to step up to the D. The seventh of the chord is the B flat. It will go down it will step down to the A. And then, the only note here is the G. Does it go up to the A or down to the F? Well, let's go to our expected resolution of the tritone. Let's look at, find it. Well, G, C sharp is an augmented fourth. G, a, B, C sharp. So, the expected resolution would be for this to step down to an F. And there's no reason 
that we wouldn't do that in this, in this circumstance. Let's look at what happens when we take that exact same 7 diminished 6, 5 and resolve it to a root position 1 chord. Now, the bass note, E, steps down to a D. Our C sharp must resolve up to D. Our seventh of the chord. So I'm going to actually, right here, leading tone. This is our leading tone. This is our seventh. Our seventh is going to go down. And we are in the same position as before. This G. Well, here it's really easy because we need to complete the chord and we don't have an F yet. So, once again, it will step down to the F to complete the chord. What about 7 diminished 4, 3? Going to 1, 6, DFA is our 1 chord. So again, we're going from C sharp, E, G, B flat. That, that does not look like a good B flat. Let's try a good looking one. And we're going to D, F, A. We're going to point out that the C sharp is the leading tone, scale degree 7 of our key. B flat is the seventh of the chord. These are the elements we want to keep careful attention to. To a 1, 6 means we want an F in the bass. Our leading tone wants to resolve up to D. So we will do that. Our B flat wants to resolve down to A. We've got that. We now have our complete chord. We have D, F, A. So the E is the only other note we've got to figure out. Does it go up to the F or down to the D? Well, this is where we go to the resolution of the tritone. If we have B flat to E, that is an augmented fourth, B, C, D, E. Therefore, we would expect that to resolve out. So we would like to hear that go out in that direction. So these are the step-by-step -step questions that you want to ask yourself to voice lead these chords. We'll try another one. This one's a little bit different. This is a 7 diminished 4, 3, resolving to a root position 1 chord. We know that that means D must be in the bass for the 1 chord. The C sharp is the leading tone. It goes up, resolving to D. The B flat is the 7. It goes down to A. We have to complete the chord. The E steps to F. When we deal with 7 diminished 4, 3, going to root position 1, the bass movement is from scale degree 4 to scale degree 1. That is not smooth voice leading. But when you have that 4 to 1, just like you have a 4 chord going to a 1 chord, that bass motion implies a plagal cadence. And we talked about this as, as in, in, in the previous uh, talk about leading tone 7th chords in major. So this, again, implies a plagal cadence. Let's look at our last example. 7 diminished 4, 2 going to 5, 7. So 5, 7 would be A, C sharp, E, G. So the B flat goes to an A. The C sharp stays. The G stays. The E stays. That's pretty easy. Okay? Let's listen to these. Our key is D minor. So our first example. Oh, sorry. That is not. It sound like that. Our second example, going to root position one. Our third example, seven diminished four three to one six.
Our next example, 7 diminished 4, 3 to 1. And our last example, 7 diminished 4, 2 to 5, 7. So there you have a whole bunch of ways in which you can voice lead and set up and use different inversions of 7 diminished 7 in a minor key.